Hello, crafty friends. I'm Lean from Studio Kato, and as always, I am very happy to be on the Crafty Meraki YouTube channel today. I am using some uh, stamps from Crafty Meraki and some inks and re-inkers by Pinkfresh Studio to paint this image. Now, I'm going to show you also a hack to color this in using the coordinating dies. So I'm using the Dream Big stamp set. I'm going to use that l gorgeous large wreath. And I'm going to stamp that onto a piece of cardstock that is way too big for a card, but I find it easier to stamp a large image like that onto a large piece of paper and then trim it down later. I'm going to emboss this, so I am prepping this with an anti-static powder tool. I'm using my Misty because, one, this is a super large image, so using, using an acrylic block would be very difficult and also i'm stamping this on watercolor cardstock so it's textured and i really want a good impression so i'm stamping this three or maybe four times even in versamark ink and then i can emboss this with wow gold rich pale embossing powder um, this is just a really really pretty gold and i am sprinkling that on making sure everything is covered before i heat set it i'm also using the wow jewel speed heat tool and I'm using that on the second setting, so the hottest and fastest setting. Now again, this piece of cardstock is way too large. I made it a little bit wider and a little bit taller, so in the end, my card is going to be a little bit smaller. Now I die cut the coordinating die from a scrap piece of cardstock. This happens to be glossy cardstock. It's um, leftover pattern paper that I just have laying around and I don't like the pattern anymore. So I use it for making stencils a lot. And that's essentially what I'm doing here. So I die cut it out of that paper. You can use acetate as well. It die cuts a little bit more difficult, <laughs> but um, it you can still manage <laughs> to die cut from acetate if you have some good acetate. Now there's also this inside piece and I'm putting some temporary adhesive on the back of that. Um, to adhere it down in the center of that image. And I'm going to start off with some ink blending. And I'm going to also say that this didn't exactly go as planned. I wanted to basically just do ink blending and very little painting. I still did very little painting. Um, this is still faster to do for me than to just paint in the image. But the inks didn't move as much as I had hoped. So I did go in later with some re-inkers as well. Uh, and you're going to see that as well. So I'm going to use some Pinkfresh Studio inks. I have my ink stand mini there on the side to hold everything in place. I find this really, really helps with ink blending, especially if you have ink cubes instead of full-size ink pads, because they're a little bit too small to hold and rub your brush over to pick up the ink. So I'm just making sure to color all of the images the way I want them to be colored. I'm using some yellow, some oranges. I used passion fruit for my red pink, and I'm also going in with some green. These are gorgeous colors. I also have the re-inkers here, and I'm putting them on my ink blending mat. This is just a laminated sheet of white cardstock. Now here is where I already did something that didn't work. You can see that the image is a little splotchy now. That's because I sprayed some water on it before doing any of this. Um, but the inks didn't really move. I don't think there was enough ink on there, to be honest. So I'm just going in with some re-inkers. I am adding some very, very simple shading, just intensifying some colors here and there with a fine brush. And I'm also making that drippy effect. So I'm just coloring it in. I'm going in with some, with a brush that has a lot of water on it. And I am going to drag that ink downwards as if the paint is dripping down naturally. It didn't do that like I wanted it to, but you can still make it look like it did. Now, painting with three inkers is totally possible, but they do behave a little bit differently than uh, normal watercolors. Some colors of these inks are staining, for example. So if you put them down on the paper, you are going to see where they were put down and you can't blend them out perfectly. But for this technique, it's it's just really, really pretty when it's not all blended out perfectly. And it's also important that you let the colors overlap, even if you're a little bit scared to. 
like that purple and that green, normally I wouldn't <laughs> let them overlap. Uh, but to make this look organic, you are going to have to. Um, you're going to have to just go with the flow and make sure you really drag out the colors as if they are dripping down and not just avoid colors underneath them. Now to add a little bit of shading to this, like a drop shadow, I am going in with an alcohol marker, which does not work well on watercolor cardstock. Please don't expect them to blend out or behave like they normally do. But for creating a drop shadow, it's perfect. It's a really simple way to add a little bit of shading to your image and make it look as if it's laying on top of the paper. Just make sure you stick to one side of the image to always add the drop shadow and you're going to have a really fun effect. Now I already die cut this uh, smiles out of there. This is going to be my sentiment. I die cut the shadow layer of that sentiment from my panel once I had trimmed it down. I'm going to do a really simple eclipse technique which I love for sentiments. So I'm inlaying this with some black cardstock and I also have additional layers of black cardstock die cut with that shadow layer. The sentiment by the way is from the Pinkfresh Studio Phrase Builder sending uh, stamp, uh, die set, sorry. I also die cut it a couple of times, um, just a scripty layer from white cardstock and from gold holographic cardstock, layering those together as well. And I'm going to adhere everything together. You can see I um, layered on the die cut that I cut out of the panel on top of all of that black cardstock. So it's raised and it, it definitely sets the sentiment apart a lot more than it would if it wasn't die cut and raised up from the panel, but it doesn't take away anything from your background. And that's what I love about that technique. Now to finish this off, I used a bunch of gems from Crafty Meraki. These are the, what are they called? The prismatic purple gems. And I love them for all things fall colored. <laughs> They're so stunning. Anything with green in it, I am going to use these gems. I said it in the last card as well, last uh, week. They're just so pretty. I hope you like this card. It's a really fun effect to do, and it's a great way to use your coordinating dies to speed up your coloring process. Uh, in total, I think I spent half an hour coloring this image, and usually this would take me closer to an hour. <laughs> so I hope you like the technique. I hope you like the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up on this video and leave your thoughts in the comments below. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.